all the blocks at the level of the thigh, usually only higher frequency linear probe can be used. So first of all, we'll try to scan from the femoral triangle area up to the adductor canal area. So femoral triangle can start from the inguinal crease. So we will just trace first vascular structure and then we'll try to identify each muscle. So right now I am over the inguinal crease, like routine femoral now block we are giving. Just I am tracing the femoral artery till I can trace it up to the adductor canal area. So now I am tracing femoral artery. I can see some variations in the muscles around the femoral artery, still artery in the picture. And I can see the femoral artery going away and dipping down somewhere in the opening in the muscle. Now, after seeing the course of the femoral artery, we will try to identify the muscle around the femoral artery. So we'll start with the femoral crease or inguinal crease. My orientation marker is towards me. The position of leg is little externally rotated. Now I'm keeping probe over the inguinal crease. I can see the compressibility of the femoral vein and femoral artery. On the lateral side of the femoral artery, you can see the hypoechoic iliacus muscle, which is quite big muscle. And femoral now gets sandwiched between the iliacus muscle and the femoral artery. You can see the femoral now. This is a hyperechoic femoral now at the level of inguinal crease. Further laterally, if you go, you can see the triangular Sart sartorius which will come into the picture. So this side is the iliacus on the middle side, lateral side is the sartorius and below sartorius there is one more hypoechoic small muscle which is nothing but the rectus femoris muscle. Now if you see, we'll trace the sartorius and we'll see how it is related with the femoral artery. So now I am tracing sartorius downwards. So now it is going near to the femoral artery Further tracing distally, I can see the femoral artery is traveling from the one end of the sartorius to the other end of the sartorius. Okay, then we further keeping the probe over the inguinal crease, we go further medially. First, you can see the femoral vein, then we can see the loop like muscle, which is nothing but the pectineous muscle. Then, further medially, if we go, now my probe is on the medial aspect of the thigh over the inguinal crease. You can see three, three muscles, which is adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus. So three muscle in between, you can see the hyperechoic anterior division of obturator now and posterior division of obturator now. Now we'll see the uppermost muscle, the hypoechoic adductor longus muscle. We'll try to trace that muscle distally and we'll see its relationship with the artery. Now the same adductor longus, we are tracing it down. You can see that adductor longus is meeting the artery at one particular junction. So now we have identified the sartorius above the artery and we have identified adductor longus, which is on the medial aspect of the artery. Further on the inguinal crease, if you keep the probe, we have seen the rectus femoris muscle below the sartorius. If you see the same rectus femoris muscle, if you trace rectus femoris muscle further down over the anterior aspect of the thigh, you can see the femur is appearing. And there are two muscles. Above one is a rectus femoris muscle. And since I am over the anterior aspect of the thigh, the lower muscle is a vastus intermedialis muscle. So if you move further medially, you can see the vastus intermedialis then vastus intermedialis is getting interrupted and there is a continuation of vastus medialis muscle. The whole muscle next to the femur is a vastus medialis muscle and if you move further medially, you can see the vastus medialis is again meeting the femoral artery. So now we have identified all the muscles around the femoral artery in the region of the thigh. Now we will try to find out what is the apex of the femoral triangle. So now if I keep my probe moving, 
down, 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 distally, I can see the sartorius muscle is coming next to the sartorius muscle over the posterior medial aspect. We have identified that muscle as a adductor longus muscle. And over the anterolaterally, we have identified that big muscle is a vastus medialis muscle. So now we can see the sartorius and adductor longus movement together. If you move further distally, the sartorius and adductor longus muscle, they are lying over one another. They are overlying each other. So this portion, this point, and this sartorius muscle, this is the medial border of the sartorius muscle, and this is the medial border of adductor longus muscle. They are lying over each other. They form, this is nothing but the apex of the femoral triangle. They form sine of three. This is also called as sine of three because it appears like a sine of three. And it is also called as kissing sign. So this is the distal most extent of the femoral triangle. Below that, any area under the sartorius will be the adductor canal area. So we have identified femoral triangle, apex of the femoral triangle. So area, suppose we mark that area, apex of the femoral triangle at one particular point. So apex of the femoral triangle we have marked. So this line corresponds to the apex of the femoral triangle. Now usually previously people used to put the probe over the mid thigh and by seeing the location of the femoral artery exactly in the center of the sartorius. Now if you see my probe is exactly over the mid thigh and I can see the artery exactly in the center of the sartorius and I can see the hyperechoic uh, saphenous now just lateral to the femoral artery. But if you see clearly this is the mid thigh point. I have marked that's mid thigh point also. So this is mid thigh point and this is apex. So as per the studies, we confirm that mid thigh point always lies proximal to the apex of the femoral triangle. So area above the mid thigh, so area at the level of the mid thigh is nothing but the femoral triangle area. Now again, we'll identify the apex of the femoral triangle. Then we move further distally, we can see the, uh, uh, we can see the adductor longus muscle is disappearing and it is replaced by another muscle. That another muscle is nothing but the adductor magnus muscle. Now you can see carefully the branching out of this femoral artery. If you see it, adductor longus is replaced by the adductor magnus. So when it is replaced by the adductor magnus up to that point, from the femoral apex of the femoral triangle is nothing but the proximal adductor canal area. Then when it is replaced by the adductor magnus, you can see one branching coming out from the femoral artery. That branching is nothing but the descending genicular artery. So when the descending genicular artery is appearing and adductor longus muscle is replaced by the adductor magnus, that means you are into the mid adductor canal portion. So you can see typically after the apex of the femoral triangle, if you clearly identify, you can see uh, if you move upwards into the femoral triangle and if you see the lower border of the sartorius and then if you move distally to the apex of the femoral triangle and if you see the lower border of the sartorius, you can typically see the bilayering of the sartorius because of the presence of vasoadductor membrane. So now, so far we have identified the proximal adductor canal area, mid adductor canal area. Now, the artery will move away from the sartorius and will dip into the opening of the adductor magnus. So this area is nothing but the distal adductor canal area where it becomes popliteal vessel. Now we'll see all the blocks one by one. So far we have identified apex of the femoral triangle. We have marked the apex of the femoral triangle where it forms a kissing sign or uh, sign of three. Now you just move one to two centimeter above the apex of the femoral triangle. You will enter into the distal femoral triangle area. Now try to see the intermuscular plane between the sartorius and vastus medialis muscle. You can see two hyperechoic dots in between the intermuscular plane.
these dots are nothing but the saphenous now just lateral to the femoral artery and now to SS medalis which is further lateral to the saphenous now. So femoral triangle block can be given by separating this intermuscular plane and by putting the needle in plane direction from lateral to the medial side and separating the plane with the 10 to 20 ml of the drug. So again coming towards the apex of the femoral triangle, if you move 1 to 2 centimeter distal to the apex of the femoral triangle, you will enter into the proximal adductor canal area. So the proximal adductor canal block can be given just 1 to 2 centimeter distal to the apex of the femoral triangle. This is apex, 1 to 2 centimeter distal. Uh, this is the proximal adductor canal area. Here you have to deposit around 10 to 20 cc of the drug under the VAM. As per the diastole, the whole drug will track along with the femoral vessel and it will move towards the popliteal area and it will stain the popliteal plexus. So dual substratory block, again, uh, we are identifying the apex of the femoral triangle. We are moving one, one centimeter upwards. We are identifying the saphenous now, now to SS medalis and specifically targeting those two nerves and separating the plane between the sartorius and vastus medialis muscle. Now coming back to the apex of the femoral triangle, 1 to 2 cm distal to the apex of the femoral triangle, then the second injection will put just next, next to the femoral vessel under the VAM so that while injecting the drug you can see the compression of the femoral vessel. Now the effect or analgesic effect of the adductor canal at any level below uh, at the level of proximal uh, adductor canal, mid adductor canal or distal adductor canal is same. But we recommend to give proximal adductor canal block so as, so as to avoid the proximity towards the surgical area because this dual substratory block we are mainly given for the total knee replacement surgery and this surgical dressing may come up to this area. <coughs> so that proximal adductor canal area is quite safer to give this block. Now coming back to the high pack block. High pack block is nothing but the putting high volume into the proximal adductor canal area. Same only, again identify the apex of the femoral triangle, move 1 to 2 cm distal, you will enter into the proximal adductor canal area, then around 30 to 40 ml of drug can be injected, first targeting the saphenous now, and remaining drug just you just have to deposit below vasodilator membrane next to the femoral artery. So this is high pack block. Now we will see how high pack is given. We are tracing the femoral artery. Femoral artery is going away from the sartorius. Now when it moves away from the sartorius and enters over the into the opening of the adductor magnus, you can see over the anterior medial aspect of the leg, you can see the condyle of the femur is also appearing. So this uh, the part of the vessel which is entering into the adductor magnus is nothing but the popliteal artery, this femoral artery becomes popliteal artery. So you just have to put one 10 to 15 centimeter uh, needle in plane and deposit drug between the popliteal artery and the condyle of the femur where the capsular attachment of the knee joint is there. So it is just creating a field block between the popliteal artery and the capsule of the knee joint. So this is a popliteal artery, this is a capsule of the knee joint in plane needle will come here and while uh, just put the needle here and while withdrawing just inject around 20 cc of the local anesthetic. So this uh, infiltration or this injection will block only the popliteal plexus and it will cover the posterior component of the pain. Same injection you can give by putting the probe over the popliteal area. So just ask patient to flex the leg. And just try to pointer is towards me. I am scanning over the popliteal region. I just kept my probe over the popliteal crease. I will try to identify the vessels. So I can see the vessels here. So you can see. The popliteal artery, which is appearing as an anechoic, just above the popliteal artery, there will be vein. So, upon you can see the compressibility of the vein. And just above the vein, there is PBL now. Typically, we are seeing this picture while giving popliteal cytic block. If you trace upwards, 
this TBL and common pain and now are meeting together and they form sciatic now. But right now for IPEC block, you just have to keep the probe over the popliteal area. When the TBL now is visible, just try to increase the depth so that you can see the hyperechoic portion of the femoral condyle just below the popliteal area, popliteal vessels. So you can see the hyperechoic femoral condyle. So when you see the femoral condyle, you just have to take the needle around 15 to 20 centimeter needle and put in plane needle so that the needle will come between the popliteal artery and the hyperechoic bony area of the femur and while withdrawing the needle just deposit around 20 cc of the drug creating a field block. So this is how the popliteal approach of the IPAC is given. Thank you so much for listening.